All right, now we're going to continue our discussion of the Moore Coulomb failure criterion. And specifically, we're going to look at this uh, angle between the minor principal stress plane and the failure plane called alpha sub f. So as you recall, this is the minor principal stress, sigma 3 prime f. Major principal stress is here, sigma 1 prime f. Uh, and then we have this point of tangency between the Moore Coulomb failure envelope and the Moore circle. And that point defines the failure condition or the failure plane. Uh, and then, of course, we have the center of the circle um, that's the average of sigma 1 prime and sigma 3 prime. So what we'll do is draw a line up between these, the minor stress point and the uh, point of tangency between the circle and the failure envelope. And that angle is alpha sub f. Oh, not very good. Alpha. Zoom in on this. All right. So this is alpha f. And what we want to do to solve this problem is uh, solve for alpha sub f. And we're going to make a, um, a couple of triangles in here. First, I'm going to extend the line down from um, the point of tangency straight down to the x-axis. So that's a right angle with the x-axis. And what we ultimately want is um, to look at that, at that triangle right there. That's the red triangle that I'm shading in here. That's the one that we need um, in order to solve for that angle alpha sub f. So we just need to define a few side lengths, that vertical length and then this horizontal length. So to define the vertical length, I'm going to sketch a couple more lines. And I'm, I'm going to make this one dashed since it's kind of like an intermediate or construction line. So that one's the uh, radius r. Um, so this this side length right here, let's sketch a line parallel to the failure envelope. This distance was equal, I'm going to call it r for radius, and it was simply equal to sigma 1 prime f minus sigma 3 prime f divided by 2. Okay, and then we'll notice that this little angle in here is equal to phi prime. Right, because it's the same as, uh, um, well, anyway, you can see that that angle is phi prime by symmetry and, and, and by geometry. Therefore, this height right here is equal to r cosine phi prime. Um, okay, and then we just need to solve now for that side length. Um, this distance here is r. Uh, this distance, um, sorry, I labeled the wrong angle as phi prime. It's, uh, this angle is phi prime. There we go. Okay, that's better. Then this distance is r sine phi prime. So, of course, this little leg that's left is r minus r times sine phi prime. All right, so we can now write out our, um, our expression, we have tangent of alpha sub f is equal to, uh, well, let's, let's actually draw the triangle first, right? So I'll draw and label all of the side lengths first so it's clear. This distance is r cosine phi prime. This one is r times 1 minus sine phi prime. And of course you have that length, and then you have alpha sub f. We don't even need to solve for the hypotenuse of this right triangle. We're just going to use these quantities as, as they already exist to solve for alpha. So the tangent of alpha f is equal to r cosine phi prime divided by r times 1 minus sine phi prime. And so the r's cancel, the angle doesn't depend on the size of the triangle, just those angles. And what I'm going to do now is substitute in um, cosine of phi prime squared plus sine phi prime squared is equal to 1. Therefore, cosine of phi prime is the square root of 1 minus sine phi prime, sine squared phi prime. So we have 1 minus sine squared phi prime divided by... Uh, 1 minus 
sine b prime. Uh, okay, and then we can further reduce this by noting that one minus sine phi prime can be represented um, as the expansion of one plus sine phi times one minus sine phi, right? So then we have tangent alpha f is equal to the square root of one plus sine phi prime times one minus sine phi prime. And then we divide that by one minus sine phi prime. And of course we have a one minus sine phi prime in the top and the bottom. So we can simplify that further. Square root of one plus sine phi prime divided by the square root of one minus sine phi prime. All right, we know from our previous lesson that this one plus sine phi divided by one minus sine phi also has a trigonometric identity. So we get the tangent of alpha f is equal to um, the tangent of, uh, well, here, let's put it in the square root, square root of the tangent squared of 45 degrees plus b prime over two. Okay, our trig identity is that um, tan squared of 45 degrees plus phi over 2 is equal to 1 plus sine phi over 1 minus sine phi prime. Okay, so you can find that in any kind of table of trig identities. All right, so if we square both sides here, you get tangent squared alpha f is equal to tangent squared of 45 degrees plus phi prime over two, which of course reduces simply to uh, alpha f is equal to 45 degrees plus phi prime over two. So there's our answer. I'll put it in a uh, red box to show that we've gotten to the end here. And um, let me just explain why this is important from a physical perspective. Right, we've solved for this angle, big deal. What, is it, what does it mean? Okay, so let's say that we do a test on a soil sample. We take it from the ground. We, um, oftentimes we do tests on soil samples that are kind of tall relative to their diameter, like a triaxial test. And what we're gonna do in the triaxial test is impose a stress condition on the soil so that you have sigma one prime F vertical. So basically this is like a compression test and sigma three prime is horizontal. Sigma three prime f is horizontal. All right, so um, what happens in this test is that a lot of the time you'll form a distinct rupture plane, okay? And so there, it'll be like one block of soil is now sliding on this rupture surface relative to the other block of soil. And those rupture surfaces are inclined at this angle alpha sub f. So, you know, that defines these these angles of failure, where uh, the angle relative to, um, to, let's see, it would be this angle right here is 45 degrees plus B over two, uh, right? So that this, this tells us the, uh, ge something about the geometry of the failure, and this is, We'll talk about this test later. This is a triaxial compression test. <clears throat> okay, there are a lot of different ways that we can do um, tests of soil strength. Triaxial compression is just one of them that we'll talk about later. But uh, anyway, these green lines are failure planes. Let me write that in. All right, now let's take a look at what happens if we have um, cohesion. So we haven't really talked yet about how to solve the more Coulomb failure criterion with cohesion, just for cohesionless soil with C prime equals zero. So more Coulomb failure with cohesion. 
All right, so we end up with um, a tensile region now. This is tau, sigma prime, and our failure surface is uh, going to be this one, so that there's C prime and C prime. And then we'll look at a circle here. Thought I picked the green color, but we'll just keep it blue. That's okay. Uh, now I'll use green to draw in the triangle. Well, let me label some failure conditions. Sigma prime one, whoops, one f. Sigma three prime f. Um, and then here's the center. And now we can draw the triangle that we need to solve from the point of tangency down to the center. So that's a right angle up there. Then there's this one and this one, right? So if we um, label some side lengths here, this is going to be uh, C prime over tangent of phi prime, right? Because this height right there is C prime, and this angle is phi prime. So you can just easily solve by uh, geometry or trigonometry what this value has to be. Then we have... Um, Draw it a little bit offset down here. This one is sigma one prime f plus sigma three prime f over two. And then of course we have sigma one prime f minus sigma three prime f over two along the other leg of this um, right triangle. All right, so now we have a fairly easy task ahead of us, just doing some algebra, the equation that we'll solve sine phi prime is equal to sigma 1 prime f minus sigma 3 prime f divided by 2. So that's the, that's that side length. And then we do uh, divided by the other length, which is going to be c prime over tangent phi prime plus sigma 1 prime f plus sigma 3 prime f divided by 2. All right, and what we'll do is multiply the top and bottom by 2, and we end up with um, this expression right here, 2 C prime over tangent B prime plus sigma 1 prime F plus sigma 3 prime F over two, uh, sorry, no over two anymore. Got rid of that. There we go. Um, all right, and if we do some algebra here to solve for sigma three prime f in terms of sigma one prime f, we end up with, uh, with this equation. So I'm going to spare you the algebra. I know all of you can do this. Um, if you have any questions about how I arrived at this equation, feel free to let me know. All right, so we start off with what we had derived before. This is the exact expression we had just for the um, cohesionless soil. But now we have another expression here, minus two C prime uh, cosine B prime divided by one plus sine B prime. Okay, and so uh, we have this other term in here now the C prime term, and that's what's changed between um, cohesionless and cohesive. Um, okay, what we can do again is, just like we did with alpha f, we can notice that cosine of phi prime is equal to the square root of one minus sine phi prime squared. And so we can simplify this cosine over one plus sine phi prime squared to be equal to, uh, the, the, in this case, it's the square root of one minus sine phi over one plus sine phi. So this is going to be sigma one prime f running out of space here, but I think you can see what I'm doing. Okay, and then we also had already defined this quantity, 1 minus sine phi prime, 
divided by 1 plus sine phi prime. It's simply Ka, right? It's the coefficient of active earth pressure. So sigma 3 prime F is equal to Ka, sigma 1 prime F, minus 2 C prime square root of Ka. All right, and we've, we've done it. We've gotten our, our final answer here. That is the uh, earth pressure. It's the relationship between the major and minor principal effective stresses at failure for a soil that has some cohesion. So let me box this up, and we're done. <laughs>